Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. I am very happy to say that I'm doing much better this week than I was last week, um, really for the past two or three weeks. I've finally felt like I'm coming back to myself. I think taking about a week off the PhD and five days off work completely was probably the best thing I could have done for myself. So I can highly, highly recommend that for any of you who might be struggling at the moment. If you have the freedom to take some time off, whatever obligations or work that you have going on, um, then I absolutely would suggest that you do so. I was a bit unsure about whether I should be trying to push on and um, act normally, you know, kind of live normally as much as possible versus trying to take a break uh, in order to kind of let my stress response lower and so on. And uh, yeah, in the end, I think taking that break absolutely was a good plan. I'm kind of easing back into work now, taking it slow, taking it gradual, not getting too stressed out about deadlines or anything like that. And just, you know, uh, letting things kind of tick over again, getting things done. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just generally feeling much, much better. Uh, my anxiety levels are like way down again and um, I'm feeling physically healthy. And um, I'm really hoping that the next few weeks of this time here down in Kerry um, is going to be maybe a bit more enjoyable for me, a little bit more productive as well, obviously. Um, but primarily I want to kind of, as I said in the last video, try to make this time enjoyable and make the most of it and um, uh, take the opportunities that I have that I wouldn't ordinarily have at this time um, of being down here, of being kind of restricted to my home and to sort of the the, the two kilometre radius around my home. So today I'm not going to branch off in any crazy way from the kind of uh, topics that I've been talking about recently, giving you a kind of update on uh, what's going on in my life and how I've been feeling and um, how I'm coping with everything and so on. Um, have, I've had a few other kind of more specific video requests um, that I am going to consider doing. Um, I've had a request to talk about kind of Irish paganism and um, the idea of kind of Celtic paganism and so on, which is something I might think about and make some notes on and make a video on soon. Uh, and I've also had a request to do uh, some kind of tarot reading, um, especially, you know, uh, focused around the current situation that we're in and so on, which I, I'm going to consider doing. I don't have a lot of tarot decks here, but I do have a few that I can work with. Um, so I'm going to consider those and possibly get to them in future weeks. Um, but for the most part this week, I'm going to stick to the same kind of format of just kind of rambling off the top of my head, talking to you about how things are going, um, but also kind of want to specifically talk a little bit more about my experience of being here in Kerry and a little bit of what that experience is like and what life down here is like, I suppose, because one of the requests that I had in the comments of the last video was to talk a bit about life here and what it's like for those of you who are not from Ireland, who um, are not familiar with um, this part of the world and so on. So uh, yeah, I think that fits most easily in with the sort of vibe that I've been going with recently, which is a sort of riffing off the top of my head, just having a bit of a chat and so on and so forth. So generally speaking, rural Ireland is farmland. I've probably talked a little bit about this in videos from way, way, way back in the channel. Um, but yeah, Ireland, basically, we have very, very little wilderness left, practically none. We have very few trees and very few woodlands or forests. We basically have no significant forests to speak of left um, on uh, on the island. Um, we're, yeah, we, we lost a huge amount of our forestry and our trees um, right back as far as the Norman invasion. Uh, so we're talking kind of a thousand years ago. And um, yeah, ever since then, there's been kind of a gradual, more and more decimation of our, our woodlands and our forests and so on. So rural Ireland is very much farmland, um, green open spaces, uh, hills and mountains, mountains in some parts of, of the kind of west coast. A lot of the main part of the country in the Midlands is just kind of very gently hilly kind of countryside and no big mountains or anything like that. But we do have some mountains that I think, you know, even those of you from mountainous countries might just about consider to be actual mountains. Um, but yeah, the landscape is very much, if you've seen, you know, if you've watched any of my vlogs from Kerry that have included footage from the area, you'll have noticed that. Um, you might have noticed that there are some trees though around the area where uh, we live, uh, but all of that is forestry. So it is uh, companies who are growing trees, uh, pine for the most part, in order to sell them uh, for presumably uh, to make furniture. That's what I'm guessing. They're not particularly brilliant for burning uh, pine trees, um, but they are good. They're fast growers and they make good 
uh, they make good wood for production, for um, construction, basically. Uh, so we do actually, we're lucky enough in the valley, um, or in the kind of two little valleys uh, near where, where our house is situated, we are lucky enough to have a, a decent amount of forestry. I say a decent amount, it's not that extensive, um, but it's certainly more than there would have been, say, 20 years ago and or more, um, when the whole area would have had, you know, very few trees at all. So that's what rural Ireland is like. And um, I kind of grew up, thinking of that as being wilderness and thinking of that as being nature, uh, thinking of sort of fields, uh, green fields just with grass uh, that are fenced off with kind of just stone walls a lot of the time, not even a lot of hedgerows and so on, and uh, just kind of a, a wide open landscape of mountains and fields. That to my mind was always nature. Um, and I think that's probably very different to very many of you who might live in places where there are actual wildernesses left, where there are woodlands and so on, and places that are much um, less kind of touched by farmers and by, you know, uh, just generally industrialization and so on. Uh, this also means that we're surrounded by farm animals. Um, we are surrounded by a lot of sheep <laughs> where our house is. And um, they're, we're in lambing season at the moment. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of cognitive dissonance for me in terms of interacting and seeing those farm animals because I know that a lot of them are farmed for their meat and that a lot of them are going to go to slaughter and even if they're not, that they're you know not being necessarily kept um, under ideal conditions and so on. Um, so it's it's a little bit difficult for me, especially when I see the lambs in lambing season. I try actually not to ask too many questions about what mostly happens to the lambs um, around this area. I know that they're mostly sold on, um, but what ultimately happens to most of those lambs, I'm not entirely sure. I know that a lot of farmers do keep sheep uh, to shear their wool and so on, but I would have to imagine that a, a large enough percentage of, of those animals are actually being sold for their meat, which is upsetting. Uh, and it's it's hard to, it's hard to kind of um, juxtapose that with feeling uh, very attached to those sheep and also feeling again like they kind of are part of this package of nature um, that I grew up as a child um, experiencing and feeling as though this was this kind of um, wild and free uh, kind kind of place and space and um, I obviously didn't think a lot as a child about the fact um, of how those animals were being treated or why it was that they were being um, uh, that they were being bred in the first place. Um, but that being said, like I said, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance. Sometimes I am very uncomfortable about it, but most of the time, or a lot of the time, at least some of the time, um, maybe more accurate to say, I can just enjoy the fact that I get to be around other types of animals that I'm not normally around in, in the city. Um, I actually quite like the sheep. They can be pests. We don't, we haven't finished fencing off our, our land. We end up with sheep in our garden quite frequently, which drives my parents crazy, but, um, I'm, I'm very fond of them. I think they're very funny animals and, um, yeah, that's all part of that experience as well. And of course, um, farming and agriculture as nature is a really in integral part of paganism as well, as we know it, contemporary paganism as we know it, the wheel of the year and so on, it is based on the agricultural calendar. Uh, so this idea of seeing farmland and fields and, and all of that kind of cycle in the year as being nature or natural, um, it really is something that works well with the wheel of the year that I work with and the way that I think about the seasons uh, changing and, and so on. So in an ideal world, I would definitely prefer to be able to get out into true wilderness. I would love to be able to get out into uh, untamed forests or woodland and um, to actually visit places where not very many humans actually ever go. Uh, that would be wonderful for me. I would absolutely love that. And I absolutely love woods and forests. I have always done so. Um, and like I say, sadly, I don't have a lot of access to that here. Um, so in an ideal world, I think I would probably do a lot of, I would probably spend a lot of time in those kinds of spaces and I would probably do a lot of spiritual practice and ritual and so on in those kinds of spaces, but it's just not readily available to me. So I feel like this kind of rural, a farmland experience that I have down here in Kerry is the next best thing for me. It is for me the closest thing to uh, being close to nature, getting back to nature uh, kind of thing for me. And something that I really do appreciate about being down here is that I feel like I get more of an opportunity to 
get to know my surroundings and get to know the land around me and get a feel for it and um, to spend I spend more time uh, walking the land and um, walking on paths that aren't, you know, paved, uh, that aren't trodden by dozens, if not hundreds of people or thousands of people every day. Um, I get that opportunity to um, to feel like I'm just going a little bit off uh, the beaten track, I suppose. And I'm lucky enough to have certain places that I can go to regularly where I'm not going to be interrupted by other people. I'm going to have a certain amount of privacy but where I have this kind of almost completely uninterrupted communion with nature, with my surroundings, with the place that I'm in, with uh, the land and the mountains and the sea and the river that are close to me, that are, um, you know, that create the environment in which this house is situated. And that is very special to me and it's something that I try not to overlook. Um, obviously it's something that I try to appreciate in at my house in Dublin as well and I am very blessed to have a very beautiful neighbourhood in that area as well. But down here it definitely feels different. It feels, um, it feels as though I can sort of overlook all of the human changes to some degree that have been made to the place and imagine myself into um, a, a wild version of that space. And I mean, there's a lot to be said maybe about the idealization of nature and, you know, why it should be seen as being a particularly spiritual thing to get away from human made um, constructs, to get away from society and so on. But to be honest, for me, a lot of it is rooted in, you know, even putting aside any idea, any, any idealization of um, pure nature and unadulterated nature as being more spiritual which is a whole other topic in and of itself. I also find that um, it's it's the best way to feel as though you are truly alone with your own thoughts and spending time purely with yourself, I find is to be outside in a space where you actually feel connected to the land around you and there aren't a lot of other people around and you're not having to be kind of um, confronted constantly with other people's interpretations of that space around you. It's just between you and that space. So ordinarily when I'm down here um, taking some time off work or taking a holiday or even if I'm not, even if I am working, um, we actually usually do kind of travel out in the car to other places quite a lot like we will drive to another part of the peninsula we will drive even just kind of 10 20 kilometers to go somewhere else to, to go for a specific walk um or even you know we might even drive to the beach even though it's only about two two ish kilometers away just to save that two kilometer walk back and forth um we will drive to the to the peninsula across the bay and drive around there and um, go for walks around there and i love having that freedom and i'm really looking forward to having my driver's license and being able to do that stuff by myself because there are so many beautiful parts of the country around here there are so many beautiful places to go um but i am trying to kind of lean into the positive sides of not being able to do that right now because of course we're not supposed to be doing that at the moment um we're allowed to be going to shops so we're allowed to be driving to a shop we're not actually really doing that at all at the moment and uh, we're getting all of our food and everything delivered to the house and um, apart from that we're only supposed to leave the house and go two kilometers um, in two kilometer radius from the house only for exercise and supposed to be just once a day. So obviously getting in the car and driving somewhere, even if it's only 10 kilometers away uh, or less at the moment is, um, you know, you're not supposed to be doing it. Uh, and you know, it might be maybe unnecessary in a rural part of the country here where you're not going to be interacting with other people. Even if you do that, even if we drive somewhere, get out of the car, we're not gonna see other people, but we're still sticking to that because you know that's what we're being asked to do. And um, yeah, we're, we're sticking with those guidelines. Um, but what this means is that I'm actually spending way more time than I ever have before uh, isolated to this very small part of the world, sticking within, um, and honestly recently it's been probably less than a two kilometer radius around the house, and um, going on all of my walks just within that space. And it means that, um, not that I've never spent a week before without kind of going elsewhere, but honestly it's been quite rare. Um, it's been rare that I haven't broken the seeming monotony of seeing the same views every single day, doing the same walks every single day, you know, going going off on the same trail, sitting in the same spots. Um, I've always kind of been the kind of person who likes to break that monotony, who likes, who's always seeking um, novelty and always kind of wanting to get out and about where there are other people and so on. And after after four weeks of this, 
I'm actually starting to find that I'm appreciating these spaces more than I used to in a way that I wasn't really expecting to. Um, I'm starting to get to know uh, the paths and roads around my house much, much better than I ever used to. I'm starting to notice things around in my environment that I wouldn't have noticed before, little details about the area. Um, and I'm actually starting to appreciate the views that we have and my favorite spots um, along those routes. I'm actually starting to appreciate them more than I used to. Um, even though I'm seeing them more and I'm, I'm, I'm spending more time in those places, I'm finding that I'm, I'm kind of noticing more how lucky I am to be in the place that I am right now. I'm, I'm noticing just how incredibly blessed I am to uh, be stuck uh, in such a beautiful part of the country. And, and maybe something of the monotony is actually starting to um, help me appreciate the, the beauty and, and the feel of the area that I'm in um, when I'm spending time in that place and, and really trying to make an effort to get outside of my own head and my own body and participate in the environment around me. And I've really noticed now that the anxiety has died down in me again and that I'm feeling a lot of optimism and excitement um, about my future life to come, even though I, sh I feel like I should be feeling frustrated right now because um, I don't know when I'm going to have the freedom to do those kinds of things, to go and live in other countries or um, to even just be able to go out and meet new people and do new things. I don't know when that's going to be possible, but I'm starting to recognize, I guess, how lucky I am and how much freedom I actually have in my day-to-day -day life because I am, am, you know, self, well, I'm not self-employed currently, but I'm the same to all intents and purposes I am because I'm working on a PhD. You know, I set my own hours. I control my own work environment. I control how I live my life. And I've set up my life um, so far in my 20s and my early 30s, uh, Everything that I have done towards my career has been to make sure that I can continue to control my work environment and to control my working life. And that might not always be the case. And I certainly want to have a job at some point again. Um, I do miss having a work environment. I miss having work colleagues. Uh, but at the same time, my, my greatest aim has always been to be able to work autonomously and to be able to be in control of that and to be able to put down my work and go outside and walk somewhere and sit and have a moment uh, whenever I want to, whenever I kind of feel called to do that. And so ironically, I would say that I'm actually feeling a lot of freedom right now in this very moment. Um, I'm feeling um, a huge release, I think, of, of expectations on myself and um, a lot of the things that I've been berating myself around, the, the things that I haven't yet achieved in my life and um, yeah, all of the boxes that I thought that I might have ticked by the time I was 31. Uh, I'm feeling actually, I'm, I mean, some days, don't get me wrong, I've been feeling very stressed about things because I feel like it's going to take longer for me to get to certain points because of kind of life, us all having to hit the pause button on life basically right now. But to a large extent, I am just actually feeling more free. I'm actually feeling um, more like we, we are experiencing such an unprecedented situation that um, right now I can't possibly berate myself for this situation. I am uniquely free over the next several months to kind of live my life and spend time on myself and my own pursuits in whatever way um, I see fit. And, um, and I am actually very excited again about the projects that I want to lean into and so on. And um, I think spending time here down in Kerry also just reminds me that my aim, I, I definitely want to throw myself into a lot of projects. There are a lot, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. I'm really looking forward to working hard on things that aren't academia again. Um, I am really looking forward to that. But at the same time, being down here for this period of time has reminded me that part of my aim and part of my idea of being successful has turned into a lifestyle where I don't have to work you know, 60 hours a week where I, I'm not pushing myself to be just sitting at a desk, you know, for um, even eight, eight hours a day. I've, I Ultimately, I would like to not be working at a desk eight hours a day. I would like to have a lot more freedom. I would like to be um, maybe focusing less on work and getting kind of making, making do with less and living a simpler lifestyle um, in order to be able to do things like grow vegetables on our land here in Kerry and, um, you know, do, do things like that, spend more time in the garden, spend more time cultivating the land. 
Um, I don't know whether or not that's going to be something that is going to be part of my life anytime soon. It might be more of a kind of a retirement lifestyle for me um, way down in the future, but I, I definitely am noticing how Noticing again how content I feel when I take a day to just potter around the garden with my dad and um, plant things and um, plan for the future and think about, you know, what vegetables we might try to plant if we can get a hold of any seeds this year and things like that. And, um, and how important finding space for that life is for me um, because not everybody manages to achieve that in their lives. Not everybody wants to. Not everybody wants to take that kind of slow lane, I guess in life and I don't want to all the time but um, I'm really appreciating that that's part of the picture for me and it's part of what I want to make sure that I have time for in my life. So yeah there's a lot of different stuff going on right now I guess in my head in terms of thinking about the future and my experience right now and how this experience has made me feel um, but I am I am pretty grateful to be spending uh, this time down in Kerry and to be spending much longer here than I actually possibly well, I, I would say ever will in the future. I never say never, but certainly over the next 10 years, I can't imagine that I'll ever spend this many weeks here back to back. Um, and I think that this is actually a really good point for me to be getting a little bit introspective and to be spending time with myself, with my thoughts and outside and getting to know this space and really kind of digging in roots, I guess, um, at a time in my life where a huge part of my life is coming to a close and um, I'm going to be free very soon to do new things. And I need to kind of, I'm feeling a big need to kind of ask myself, who am I now? And what is it that I want to do now? What does my spirituality mean to me now? And um, right now, my spirituality means being in this space and really being present in this space and really noticing um, my experience of the land around me and um, and my place in that. And so I think that's enough of a ramble from me today. Um, I hope that you've gotten something out of this. Uh, like I say, I will uh, consider making a more structured kind of planned video for next week. Maybe I will do a tarot video next week for a change. Thanks a million for watching. I hope that you are all continuing to do okay. Um, I hope that you're all safe and well and um, that you're just kind of keeping your, your head above the water and that you are looking after yourself, looking after the people around you and um, yeah, and distracting yourself and taking taking a step back from, from work and obligations if you can, when you need to. I think that's uh, an important thing to remember right now, um, to just remember to be kind to yourself and yeah, that we're in very unprecedented territory right now and it's okay if you're not doing brilliant. Um, just be kind to yourself. So yeah, uh, take good care and um, I'll talk to you again next week.